Today I want to share with you the best graphic settings for Warzone after the Black Ops 6 integration with Season 1. Now if you've jumped into Big Map, you might have noticed that the game looks and performs absolute piss poor after the Season 1 integration of Black Ops 6. So today I have a few tips for you to help you make your game look so much better than when having everything set to low and at the same time not make you lose too much performance and on some systems it's even possible to boost performance with these optimized settings. But before jumping into the game, you want to make sure that some of your config settings are properly set. For this you want to go to your documents folder, go to Call of Duty, Players and open the COD24 file. Now quick note, if you don't have this .txt file here, then this is because you don't have extensions enabled. So to get those to show up, you want to click on View, then Show and make sure that the file name extension is checked. After that, you should hopefully see the s.1.0.cot24.txt file, uh, which you then can open up in any editor of your liking. Now the first option you want to look for is the renderer worker count. And this sometimes gets set to a wrong value. And you just want to double check if this is set properly. Now I did an entire video about what to set here and I'm not going to go into detail again. But to make it very short, you want to look for the number of your physical cores on your system or the number of P cores if you're on a 13th or 14th gen Intel CPU and you want to put that number in here. Now a lot of people actually recommend to set physical cores minus one because they argue that this starts at zero. But from my testing in Warzone, I really didn't find any difference in terms of the averages and 1% lows, whether I set this to the number of physical cores, minus or plus one. Next, you want to look for show blood and set this to false. Now, by setting this to false, you're eliminating this sort of red puff and the blood effect when shooting enemy players. And this can, in some situations, lead to better visibility in Warzone. Additionally, you can set the blood limit to true and the blood limit interval to 2000 as many attentive viewers of my last video noticed, um, this shouldn't be set to one because it's a time between effects, so a larger time means less effects. However, when setting show blood to false, this shouldn't have an effect anyways. Finally, you wanna look for heaps and depending on whether or not you have an AMD GPU, you wanna set this to true and make sure to actually enable resizable bar in BIOS. And on the other hand, if you have an Nvidia GPU, set this to false and disable rebar in BIOS. Short side note, rebar in Black Ops 6 is actually not officially supported by Nvidia. So even if you turn this on in the BIOS and here, it shouldn't have an effect in game. But if you force rebar on using the Nvidia inspector, then your averages are likely going to be higher at the expense of much worse 1% lows. Anything else in this configuration file has absolutely no impact on performance or the visuals of Call of Duty Black Ops 6, as I showed in another entire video, which if you're interested is linked in the card right now. Next we have two window settings that we should look at and their performance impact in Warzone. Now my AMD system really didn't benefit either from hardware action GPU scheduling or game mode. So on that system I would disable both. However, on my Intel and Nvidia based system, which is somewhat more CPU bottlenecked than the AMD system, I'm actually seeing quite a nice boost in performance with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling enabled. On the other hand, game mode doesn't seem to have a beneficial performance impact on Warzone. Now while I compare every single setting in this video, for those of you who are just interested in the best overall settings, then please use the chapters in the timeline to skip to the summary at the end of this video. The first in-game setting I want to talk about is the display mode. Now you have the option between full screen exclusive and full screen borderless and generally I wouldn't expect much of a difference between these two. I apparently have slightly worse performance on my all AMD based system but this could also be down to sampling uncertainty because the AMD based system really had a lot of variance, especially on very low settings. The GPU usage would just randomly fluctuate and because of that also the frames were very inconsistent even without changing any of these settings. So coming back to this option, you theoretically should see better input latency with full screen exclusive. However, I wouldn't expect a huge difference when running the game in full screen borderless instead. If you're on an Nvidia system, you want to always enable reflex low latency. And if you are more GPU bound, you wanna set this to on and if you're more CPU bound, you want to set this to on plus boost. Finally, make sure that VSync is disabled and the custom frame rate limit is set to unlimited. Anything else does not affect performance in game. Moving over to the quality tab, we have the render resolution, which in most circumstances, I would recommend you to leave at 100%. However, if you absolutely need to be able to boost performance beyond what your system is capable of delivering, 
then you can reduce this slightly and then to enable the LSS in order to make the game look smooth again, however in most cases I would leave this at 100%. Personally I'm no big fan of dynamic resolution and instead I would much rather use one of the upscaling filters, however I should mention that the current implementation of these upscalers seems to be broken because I didn't see a performance gain with any of these upscalers enabled. Now the only setting that seems to work as intended is Fidelity FX Cos, which will make your game look so much better than with having this disabled. So as always my recommendation here would be to run Fidelity FX Cos at a cast strength of 70 or whatever suits your personal preference. Nvidia DLSS frame generation seems to be utterly broken at the moment because I'm actually losing quite significant amount of performance when having this enabled. The VRAM scale target you want to leave on 70% unless you are experiencing some stuttering and especially if you don't have a lot of VRAM. In that case actually reducing this value might lead to better results. On the other hand just setting this to 90 as pretty much any other YouTuber out there suggests doesn't really boost performance based on my measurements. Next we have variable rate shading which is pretty much a cheat code for better performance in Call of Duty Warzone. From my testing I saw roughly 10 to 15 FPS more on the averages and even more significant boosts of the 1% lows. The way this works is by reducing the render resolution of some of the objects that are not in the center of your frame. So here you can see some examples how this reduces the texture resolution of some objects in the world. It doesn't apply this to all the objects, it does this dynamically and frankly while playing the game it's absolutely not possible to tell whether or not VRS is enabled or not by just looking at the image, however the boost in performance you will definitely feel. By the way if you're enjoying the humongous effort that I'm putting into producing these kinds of videos as soon as a update drops then leave a like and a comment down below so that more people can benefit from the best settings for Warzone. Also if you decide to join the rather small club of people that are subscribed to my channel then this would really put a huge smile on my face. Moving on to details and textures where I would highly recommend to increase this from very low at least to low or if possible even to normal. Performance wise this has a measurable impact on performance in Warzone, especially on the 1% lows, but when looking at a side by side comparison we can see that the game looks absolute trash when run at very low. On this comparison I also added the memory consumption of each preset so you can see how much more VRAM you would need in order to drive the game at that texture resolution. Naturally if you only have 8GB of VRAM running the game at normal is pretty much impossible and in that case I would recommend you to leave texture resolution on low. If you have 12GB of VRAM normal might be just fine, if you have more than that you should be fine on the normal preset. However while you should increase this from very low I would argue that there is no point in going too high because you are visually not able to discern between normal and high in most situations. Anisotropic filtering has no measurable impact on performance in Warzone. Again the results for my all AMD based system are all over the place and because of that I wouldn't trust them too much. Visually this option greatly improves the clarity of objects that are viewed at a very steep angle and I really wasn't able to see this in the multiplayer segment of Black Ops 6 which is very odd, however it's very clearly visible on Urzikstan. As this does not seem to affect performance much, my recommendation would be to set this to high. The depth of field does not affect performance whatsoever and if you like this effect or not comes down to personal preference. I personally leave this disabled. For detail quality I actually wouldn't expect any performance difference between low and normal because visually they look absolutely identical. For instance the attachment of the handrail to the crane is just missing or some trees are just missing some branches where they are coming together or the amount of grass drawn. Now actually setting this to low might give you a slight competitive advantage over people who have set this to high because some objects might not even be rendering for you when having this set to low. Particle resolution can significantly deteriorate performance especially when explosives go off and because of that and because you don't really need more um, objects to be drawn when something explodes my recommendation is clearly to set this to very low. Bullet impact I like to turn on in order to see my bullets but this of course comes down to personal preference. Persistent effects allows explosion to leave marks on additional surfaces and because this is a pretty useless option my recommendation is to leave it disabled. Next we have shader quality which is probably one of the most important settings when it comes to improving the visual fidelity of Call of Duty Warzone. So if you're noticing that you have these weird shadows where rocks for instance interact with the terrain and that the surface kind of looks very 
um, plasticky, then this is because shader quality is set to low. Performance-wise, of course, it would actually make sense to leave shader quality on low, because we're losing about 10% by moving up to medium. However, in this case, I think you don't really have much of a choice. Unless you want to make your game look like it's been a port of a mobile game, you want to run the shader quality on medium. Additionally, this will make your shadows look much nicer than when having set shader quality low, and you'll get additional reflections on some surfaces. Note that if you cannot run shader quality on medium and you need to run on low because you don't have enough performance in your system, then you don't have to worry about your gold camels to look bad, because they look exactly the same regardless of the shader quality chosen. Finally, a very odd observation I made in terms of shader quality was that when having this set to low, my all AMD system struggled to keep the GPU usage at a high percentage and it would always fluctuate, sometimes even dipping down to roughly 70%. On the other hand, when I set the shader quality to medium, I would almost always have the GPU usage sit at around 98 to 100%. On demand, texture streaming doesn't seem to have a measurable impact on performance in Warzone. However, when setting this to optimized, this makes some textures look much nicer. So if you do have unlimited internet, then my recommendation would be to set this to optimized. The local texture streaming quality, on the other hand, I would highly recommend to leave on low and not increase to normal, because this absolutely tanks the 1% lows from my testing. What this does is it adds additional objects in the world. So for instance, here you can see that we have more various rocks and some objects seem to have slightly different shapes. However, that's definitely not worth the 20 to 30% dip in 1% lows. The performance impact of shadow quality can be seen on screen right now, and especially the presets above normal lead to somewhat significant reductions in performance. Visually though, running shadow quality on very low or low leads to extremely blocky or pixelated shadows, especially of player characters, and because of that and because the performance impact isn't too insane, my recommendation would be to set the shadow quality to normal. Anything beyond that is in my opinion not worth the additional reduction in performance and the additional VRAM that is taken up by this option. Screen space shadows doesn't appear to have a measurable impact on performance, at least not from my testing, and this option introduces additional shadows on both your operator and your weapon. Now because there is not much of a difference between low and high, at least visually not, and because it makes the gun and your operator look a bit more realistic and a bit more 3D, I like to run this on the low preset. Occlusion and screen space lightning, or in other words ambient occlusion, always had a significant impact on performance in Warzone. Now again, I did struggle a bit with the results for my old AMD based system here. However, there is a clear tendency to reduce performance by roughly 5 to 10% when increasing this option. A visual comparison reveals that this option introduces additional shadow behind some objects that otherwise would not cost a shadow. For instance, the cable here for this electric box has additional shadows and also the folders in this cabinet here have additional shadows, making them a little bit more 3D and a bit more realistic. Frankly, the differences are super subtle and because this strongly reduces performance, I would always recommend to leave ambient occlusion disabled. Screen space reflection is a very nice feature that introduces additional reflections um, when viewed some surfaces at a certain angle. However, this option comes with some performance penalty that I don't think is worth the additional improvement in visual fidelity. Static reflection quality does what it says on the tin, it enhances the quality of static reflections. And this is another one of these options where I really wasn't able to find any measurable differences in performance, so whether you like this or not comes down to personal preference. Finally, tessellation has never worked in any Call of Duty I ever tested, I don't know why this option is always there, because it doesn't seem to have any effect neither on terrain or on anything else in the game, and it also doesn't appear to significantly affect performance. Volumetric quality does significantly reduce performance, especially on the high preset, and this just additionally introduces more fogginess in the game, and since you most likely just want to see more instead of less, my recommendation is clearly to leave this on low. And finally we have the water quality settings, and I know that I always got this comment on my previous videos that setting this to high would improve the visibility inside of water bodies, so I tested this out, but I do not find that these improve the visibility in water. So because they also do reduce performance, I would highly recommend to leave all of these disabled. Finally, for field of view, interestingly, I once again saw a slight increase in performance when increasing the field of view. 
Now, the reason for that is that Call of Duty aggressively reduces the render quality of different objects when increasing the field of view in order to combat the additional amount of objects that have to be drawn. But of course, what you do with field of view definitely comes down to personal preference. I personally have this at 110. And with that, we've reached the conclusion of today's video. Now, here are all of the best graphic settings for Warzone summarized for your convenience. In the config file, you want to change the renderer worker count to the number of physical cores on your system or the number of P cores if you have a 13 or 14th gen Intel CPU. And besides that, you also want to disable blood effects. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling turned out to be beneficial on my more CPU bottlenecked system and not so much on my GPU bottlenecked system. However, your mileage may vary. K mode I would recommend off. Both of my systems didn't show any performance improvement when turning this on. Resizable bar on on AMD and off on NVIDIA GPUs respectively. And coming to the in-game settings, display mode full screen exclusive, sharpener at fidelity FX cast with a cal strength of 70%, Turn off NVIDIA DLSS frame generation. Turn variable ray shading on. Set texture resolution either to normal if you have more than 12 GB of VRAM or to low if you have less than that. Texture anisotropic filtering on high. Detail quality on low. And particle resolution on very low. Shade equality I'd highly recommend to have on medium, especially if you have a rather beefy system because this can vastly improve the GPU utilization on your system and also because shade equality low leads to a lot of ugly visual artifacts, especially on Urzikstan. On-demand texture streaming set to optimized. Disable the local texture streaming quality, set shadow quality to normal or low if you don't have enough VRAM. Screen space shadows I personally prefer to have on low, however you can still leave this off and won't notice much of a visual difference. And all of the following settings you either want to disable or set to the lowest preset. Now with these optimized settings I'm actually seeing slightly higher performance, especially in the 1% lows on my all AMD system. The reason for that is that the GPU is much better utilized and of course because I enabled resizable bar. On the other hand, on my Intel and Nvidia system, I'm losing roughly 30 FPS, but at the same time the game looks unarguably so much nicer than with having set everything to the lowest settings. But that wraps it up for this video, I really hope this helped you improve your visual quality in Warzone while still maintaining good performance. So as always, thanks for watching, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in the next video.